So now that we are nearing towards the end of the chapter, we are going to be talking about an extremely complicated concept. And that concept is known as the control of gene expression. Gene expression <laughs> is highly complex and it's something that we cannot completely understand in our A-levels. So trying to condense it for the A-level audience is difficult. But for the purpose of A-levels, I'll try to keep my lesson as straightforward as possible. So the thing that we have to understand about gene expression, first thing is, what is gene expression? Now, under normal circumstances, genes will usually undergo a process known as transcription to produce the mRNA, and then the mRNA moves to the ribosome to undergo translation, where with the help of the ribosomes, amino acids are assembled based on the mRNA codons to make a specific protein or polypeptide. So in this process, the gene is used to code for the polypeptide production. The entire thing in this process here is known as gene expression. So gene expression is just what happens when the gene undergoes transcription to produce the mRNA, the mRNA undergoes translation to produce the polypeptide. So the gene is used, the information from the gene is harnessed by the cell to allow polypeptide production to happen. Now, two questions have been asked by my students. Why can't we just say the gene undergoes transcription and mRNA undergoes translation? Why do we have to use a different language? Why do we have to say the word gene expression? And the second question that students will ask is, they will say that, um, why do we even have to talk about this? Because don't all genes automatically get expressed? Now, the reason why we use the word gene expression is to keep things simple. So instead of saying the gene undergoes transcription to produce the mRNA and the mRNA undergoes translation to produce the polypeptide, we can just say the gene is expressed. That's a simple way of saying things. That is the answer to question number one. But the answer to question number two, don't all genes automatically get expressed, is a little bit, well, not a little bit, but a lot more complex. As an example, please do not memorize this example, but it helps to understand gene expression further in detail. It helps us to introduce the complex situation that is gene expression. As a human, if you are humans watching this channel, um, so <laughs> as an example, I just want you to imagine two cells in your body, the beta cell in the pancreas and also your relay neuron. Now, a favorite question I love to ask my students is as follows. I would ask my students, do these two cells have the same function? And most of my students will say no, because the relay neuron has a function where it transmits impulses and the beta cell in the pancreas in chapter 14 we studied that the beta cell produces and releases a hormone known as insulin. These two cells have completely different functions. Then my second question is, I will ask, are these two cells genetically identical? That means these two cells belong to your body. That means these are your relay neurons and your beta cells. So are they genetically the same? A lot of my students will actually say that, no, these two cells are not exactly the same. But here's the thing, they are actually identical to each other. These two cells are genetically identical, which means to say any genes that are found in the relay neuron are also found in the beta cell in the pancreas. As an example, I'm taking out a chromosome here where the relay neuron has an insulin gene and the beta cell in the pancreas also has an insulin gene, by the way. So you need to understand that all the body cells in your body, with the exception of gametes, sperm cells or egg cells, removing that, but the other cells in your body are all genetically identical. That means whatever DNA, whatever chromosomes are found in your eye cells, muscle cells, skin cells, um, white blood cells, sensory neuron, motor neuron, relay neuron, they are all exactly the same. 
If they are all exactly the same, why do these cells behave differently? Well, to keep a complicated issue short, we can basically say that even though both the relay neuron and also the beta cell in the pancreas have the insulin gene, in the relay neuron, the insulin gene is turned off, which means to say that the gene is not expressed. Yes, genes just like switches, the lamp switches that you have on your wall, can be switched on and switched off. However, the beta cell in the pancreas, the insulin gene will be switched on, which means to say the gene gets expressed where transcription happens, translation happens to produce the insulin protein. So the relay neurons, because the insulin genes are turned off, the genes do not get expressed, the relay neurons do not produce insulin. But the insulin gene in the beta cell of the pancreas is turned on, therefore the beta cell produces and releases insulin. This is the first example of the control of gene expression. Gene expression where certain genes can be switched on and switched off. Now, some students will then ask, how do these genes get switched on and switched off? We are not going to look at eukaryote. We are going to see how genes are switched on and off in prokaryotes. We will be looking at how genes can be switched on and off in bacteria in the next video. Some students will then ask me, okay, why exactly is gene expression so complicated? Let me give you another example. In this example here, I'm telling you that a gene can be switched on or switched off. This is quite straightforward. But in another example, the rate of gene expression can also be controlled, where you can also increase the rate of gene expression or decrease the rate of gene expression depending on the situation. As an example, a bit of revision here, I told you about the TYR gene. When it's expressed, it will code for the tyrosinase enzyme. The tyrosinase enzyme will be produced by the cell. Tyrosinase enzyme will take the amino acid tyrosine, convert it into DOPA. DOPA will also be converted into dopaquinone using the tyrosinase enzyme. And dopaquinone becomes melanin. And I told you that melanin is a type of pigment which can influence the color of hair, fur, skin, or even the iris. Now, as an example here, you have two mice, uh, and the mice have a brown, light brown beige color, where the mouse on the left here has a low rate of expression, where if the low rate of gene expression happens, it produces low concentrations of mRNA, so very little mRNA undergoes translation, so obviously it produces a very low concentration of tyrosinase. So because they have a low concentration of the tyrosinase enzyme, melanin production will happen, but it produces a low concentration of melanin. Hence, the color of the mouse here will be like a light beige or light brown color. However, for the mouse that is exposed to UV light, what may happen inside the cell is the cell may undergo a higher rate of gene expression. The TYR gene here may undergo a higher rate of expression where it produces a higher concentration of mRNA, where more mRNA gets translated to produce more tyrosinase. And because there is a higher concentration of tyrosinase, what happens then? higher melanin production because more ES complex formation with tyrosinase and tyrosine, so it produces more melanin. So how does it impact the cow? No, not cow, sorry, the mouse. <laughs> what am I saying cow for? Um, how does it impact the mouse? The mouse will now have a higher melanin concentration and look what happens to the fur color of the mouse. It becomes a darker color. It's more tanned or it's a darker fur. So you see, Gene expression is not just a turn on, turn off kind of situation. It can also be increased or decreased as well. That's what makes this part of the chapter highly complicated. So uh, this is just an introduction. You don't have to memorize my examples. But when we talk about the later video, when we are covering in the next video, when we are looking at gene expression in prokaryotes or bacteria, um, that is the one that is going to be needed for the exam. So I hope you're ready for that.